This video is supported by EmuDB, an open source high speed immutable database for systems and applications. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And in the previous video, M173, just released about 10 days ago, Professor René Ferlon showed us how to use vSAM with the ancient MVT COBOL compiler. And as I said at the beginning of that video, MVT COBOL compiler was released by IBM about seven or eight years before they even announced vSAM. So therefore that compiler didn't know about vSAM, but uh, the community found a way to make vSAM work together with the uh, this uh, MVT compiler, which is the only compiler, COBOL compiler we can use with MVS 3.8 because it's open source. And so Professor Alain Ferland in M173 did an excellent job showing how to use it with MVS. In this video, René Ferland continues uh, his previous tutorial and shows how to use vSAM with the COBOL compiler in DOS VSC. The little brother or the stepbrother of MBS 3.8, which is also in the open source community. And he shows us how to use it with that very interesting and and uh, beloved operating system by many, many mainframers around the world. Over to you, Rene. Now I want to do the same on uh, BOS VS. So time goes on, but that's fine. So I need a system. I'm going to use the uh, George Shedlock 5-pack uh, and, uh, and I made a video on how to use that system under VM370. So let me do it over here. So I see that I just have a TK4. So I'm going to start a new tab over here and go and I will go into what I call the 6-pack extended. That's uh, a personal version of the six pack, the VM three seventy six pack, that you can download if you wish on from this page actually. So it's it's essentially the cloud system that I just uh, made available to everyone, so you can install it. <coughs> okay, so that's the basically the system I'm using. And if you take a look over here, you'll see that not only can you download that six pack extended. This is not the 6-pack 1.3 beta, that's a 1.2 extended, hence the name. Uh, you have a zip of the, of the system, but you also have a video that shows you how to use it and uh, get started and so on. So there's a lot of documentation if you wish. So don't worry if you don't follow everything that I'm going to do now, because the documentation is available. So let me go there and start uh, my VM376 pack extended. All right, it's gonna start. Okay, so that's fine. What do you do when you have that? You just uh, answer CKPT, PT. that's all. That's because the last uh, shutdown wasn't done properly and the warm start data was not so uh, safe but we provide the checkpoint start data instead, and that's gonna work. All right, so now I have this system running. And as you can see, I have the five pack over there. That's, the, and I also have this uh, work 02 uh, DASD, because I want to use uh, COBOL on the five pack of George Shedla. And as such, it's not possible directly because uh, the COBOL compiler needs uh, work files stored on a 2314 DASD, and there are no uh, 2314 DASDs on the 5-pack. <clears throat> and I explain in a video actually how to do it, if you watch uh, one of the video I made. Uh, if you want to solve this problem, there are essentially four possibilities. Whether uh, First, you can change the work files uh, for the duration of the job or for the duration of the session, or permanently, or you can patch the compiler, okay? So uh, it's possible to do the four of them with my uh, six-pack extenders, but I chose uh, personally the second solution, that is to change the uh, work files for the duration of the session. That's the method I explained in my video, and that's the one, uh, my previous video, and that's the one I'm gonna use here, so. 
Let me start the five pack. I'm going to use a 3215 connection, you know, with Telnet, a plain Telnet. The reason I do that, it's because it's going to provide, you know, a rolling uh, console and I find it's much more easier to operate uh, DOSVS that way. So let me log on to DOSVS like this. On this uh, system, I distribute with the six-pack extended. There is a small procedure I call DAS IPL to help the IPL of the system. Then uh, I specified, I don't know if you remember that, but you have to give the supervisor first, then set for the, the date and time, then define the page data set. Keep the shared virtual area, stop BG, start F1, <coughs> sorry, uh, assign Sysin to SysRes to go get the startup JCL of power, return, return again, sorry, <coughs> sorry. I don't have COVID-19, don't worry. Okay, so now we do assign season to the card reader and all the partitions. Oh, that's not good, but that's okay. Uh, wow, well, come on. Uh, like this. F2, that's fine. Now F4, it's invalid. Okay, but that's fine. I'm gonna, just going to write it again. F3 is good. BG is good. F4, uh, that's good. Then I have this job nothing here. It's normal. It's a job to make sure that the reader becomes inactive. Now I'm going to release... Uh, the uh, job to set the logical units. Good. I'm going to delete the output of these jobs uh, like this. And if I display the reader queue, you can see that I have this WK3315, WK2314. Those are the jobs to change the work files uh, for me to be able to compile with COBOL. So I just run the job WK2314 before using the compiler and after that I run the other one to put the whole thing back to normal. I don't, I'm not sure if I run uh, things. So let me, just to be sure, let me run this one. And then after that I'm gonna set it for the 314. Oh, no, that's not the one. Okay, so now I should be ready to run to run the <coughs> COBOL program on DOSVS. Compile and run Co COBOL program, so that's fine. Now, what do I want to do? Oh, I see what uh, got closed the last time. Okay, so I want to First install Visamayo, okay? So let's, where am I? Am I over there? So let's go to DOSVS. All right, so I have this ASM Visamayo. That's the job that I need to run to install Visamayo on my DOSVS system. So it's a little bit different than MFVS uh, 38J because we're not gonna create a partition data set on the USVS because there are no such thing as a partition data set on the, the USVS. What we need to do is to assemble the, the Visamayo module and then catalog or store this module into a relocatable library. So now I'm working in the jargon of the USVS. So if you're not familiar with that, maybe you, <laughs> you watch the videos I made on working with DOSVS, those are the video N103 up to N105. 
So there I explain wh what's going on with the libraries and so on. So what I want to do is assemble Visamayo and store the module into a, a relocatable library. I'm going to use the system relocatable library and that way it's going to be easy to uh, link it the Visamayo module with a MyCobol program. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> now let's take a look a little bit uh, to this job. I had to make a few changes, but not that much. Uh, just the beginning over here, essentially. There was a lot of uh, system variables that were used to identify the module, but uh, I don't need. They don't exist, I believe, on the OSVS. So I just replaced this with a, a plain start zero over there, and it, it's going to work. But I had to, of course, specify the name. <coughs> Visamayo, so that it has the proper name when it's cataloged in the relocatable library. But beside that, nothing had to be changed. And the reason probably comes from the fact that uh, data sets are pretty different between MVS and DOSVS. There are no, for example, partition data sets and stuff like that. But VSAM data sets, they are the same on both systems. You know? so, uh, if you want to work with VSAM data sets in assembler on the OSVS, you use the same macros that you use on MVS. So, so basically what uh, Jay Moseley wrote for uh, <coughs> MVS is going to work uh, as such, you know, because the, the, the macro of the same. Essentially, as I said, the, the, the assembler module is going to take the parameters and he's going to build this uh, file description block and so on dynamically as it runs and then execute the, the operation. But those blocks and those macros that we need, they're the same on both systems. So that, that's going to work uh, fine for, uh, for us. And not only that, but uh, the MVT compiler that we're using on on TK4- is actually an ANS COBOL, an ANS C COBOL compiler. And there is an ANSI COBOL compiler also on the USVS, so these two are very similar and it, it's, it's going to work. Okay, So how do we do that? Remember, if we want to assemble a module and store it, we first have to punch it somewhere and then use a, a special program to take the, the, the punch module and to catalog it into the system uh, relocatable library but of course I'm not going to use uh, punch cards as such I'm going to use a tape so what I do is I assemble the Visamayo module and I'm going to punch the whole thing on a tape and then after that I'm going to run the, the special program to catalog the module and I'm going to give the tape as an input to that program okay so uh, as you can see here uh, first of all, since I'm going to submit this job to a virtual machine running under VM, I have to give the user ID of that virtual machine. And then these two lines, these are the, uh, the JCL for power, the uh, job scheduler. Then we have the job card of the, the job. And as you can see, I'm going to pause the job so that I have time to mount the, the scratch tape where I'm going to punch the, the module. And then, as you can see, I have this option deck, which means that I'm going to punch the, the object module and to catalog it for later. And after I have mount the tape, as you can see here, I assign the punch to the tape and I rewind the tape before, uh, before assembling and punching on the tape. And then at the end, when it's over, Okay, when the assemble is done, I'm going to mark the tape, rewind the tape, reset the punch to its default value, and then assign the, the input of that program here, mate, to the input of that program. I'm going to assign it to the tape, and then he's going to take the, the module that has been punched, if you wish, on the tape and catalog it. So that should, that should uh, do the trick. So let me try to do this and submit this job. Uh, that's again an NC 
zero, zero, one. Now the port is 3505. And let's go oh, like this. All right, so if you look here, we have a pause telling us to mount a scratch tape on 281. Now 281 here is the virtual address of the tape on the virtual machine, but it's not the address on VM itself. So what I have to do, and I do that in my videos on working with the USVS, so <clears throat> we have to first initialize or mount the tape on the the emulated mainframe, so let's take dev in it. Uh, I believe it's 581 scratch. At. Don't worry about the name because if the tape does not exist, the command uh, dev in it's gonna create it. But that's not enough. What I need now is to attach that tape from VM to the virtual machine, so that's a command uh, for VM, so I'm gonna do slash attach five the, the, the real address to DOSVS as virtual address 281. Now the tape is attached to DOSVS under this address, so I should be okay now to press enter to continue my job. That's what I say here, type EOB, the EOB means end of block or enter. And now I have this message called 4172A. That's an error message asking an, uh, an action, but I have a, <laughs> a small reminder here to answer ignore to that message if there are any. That's because the program is looking for a label and there is an it's a scratch tape with no label, so <clears throat> I just tell him to ignore the, the label, that's all. And then he's gonna assemble and catalog, and that should be okay. So let, this time I'm gonna cut the paper, if you don't mind. Uh, that was job what? That was job uh, 232, that's fine, so let's... Oh, let's uh, 232. Uh, that's the USVS. Okay, that's the old stuff. My job initial. Maybe I go put it bigger. Mm -hmm. Now these are the jobs, the first jobs I run, you know, with the so that it should be here it is. So Mount that scratch tape, blah, 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 then the assembly. Then we have this assemble, that's fine. And at the end of this, we should have, after a long time, we should have, uh, no, not yet, the, the part with the uh, main program that's going to catalog. Mm -hmm. That's a big cross reference, as you can see. Uh, okay. Almost done. There it is. So no errors found. So the assembly went fine. Well, that's not a totally sure with assembler, but that, that that's a start. And then he's executing this main program. He's gonna catalog uh, in the relocatable that module. And then after that, I believe I no. Okay. So if I want, I can check that it's there. Let me quit this. I'm gonna go. Oh, it's already long, but anyway, let's go. I'm gonna log on to a special account available on the six pack extended called DOS user. The password is DOS user. I'm gonna start the CMS DOS environment and then I'm gonna run this program uh, no I'm gonna spool my printer to my card reader and then I'm gonna run this program directory service I'm gonna ask the directory of the relocatable 
library. Uh, I'm gonna ask to sort this and uh, print it, but it's gonna go to my card reader. Then I'm gonna do SF browse and I'm gonna go bottom. These are modules in the uh, relocatable library and if I do a write 25 I can see the Visamayo module that's there in the relocatable library so that's fine. So the module was assembled and stored in the library so I'm very happy about that. I can purge this now. Okay, next step is to create uh, the physical sequential data set but I'm not going to do it. The reason is DOSVS is basically a batch system, so you don't gain that much by storing data on the disk to later use that data from the disk into a program. You better use the because all the jobs are submitted from the card reader. You better have the the the, the, the records from the card reader too. Okay. So, uh, because on MVS 3AJ, typically you run jobs from TSO with RFE and so on. <coughs> Sorry, it, it makes sense to uh, to store data and to data sets because you can easily watch, uh, look at it and so on. But on DOS VS, there is no mechanism to look at data sets on DASD easy. You know, it, it's always true. Uh, some utilities and stuff like that. So instead of storing the data set, the, the records there just to use them later, better use directly the, the card reader. Because anyway, at the time, I guess the disks were pretty expensive, so you wouldn't store that much stuff on it. It would be on cards or tapes, most probably. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna load the uh, the records into the cluster from the card reader using the, the, the COBOL program as you're gonna see. But before that I have the I need the, the copy books. Remember that the copy books were stored in the Sys2 Visamayo source and we use them in the COBOL program. So now what I have to do is store the the copy books somewhere on the DOSVS system and again there are no PDS for that what we're gonna use is the source library the system source library that's there precisely for that so we're gonna catalog these uh, copy books so uh, that's the job over here so I'm gonna use again that main program that I use to catalog the uh, module, the Visamayo module, this same program can be used to catalog sources into the source library, the system source library. So what I do, uh, I do catal s, I want to catalog a source, not a, a relocatable. That's the name of my uh, uh, copy book and then I specify the copy book. Uh, and then uh, I believe it's like that. And then I catalog another one here. So that, that should work uh, very easy. And then I'm gonna display the, the directory to see uh, that my uh, copy books have been properly uh, cataloged. So let's run this job. Uh, so again, it's something like this. Fortunately, there is no tape now. So that should be easier to run. So it went to there and executed actually. Okay, so this time I'm gonna cut, whoop, sorry. I'm gonna cut the paper. Uh, that was job uh, 233. Where is it? Over here. Uh, nope, there. So he cut uh, 233. Uh, I'm gonna do this. No. So what happens here? Okay, main. Then he's gonna catalog these two. That goes fine. And then I have the uh, directory here, and I can see right there. Mm -hmm. uh, C Visamayo, C Visamayo FB. So these are the two COBOL copy books. Just before these are the uh, 
the supervisors, you know, for the, the different supervisors of the USVS that are distributed with the, the system. All right. Uh, so that's good. And now I need to create the VSAM data cluster. So that goes pretty much like uh, uh, the same way as uh, it goes on MVS. Let me show you. Uh, KSDS, uh, not print, but uh, oh, that's def. Okay. I changed this. So you. <coughs> Uh, the define here is almost the same as the one that I have on MVS. There is a cluster, parameter, data, index, and so on. There is no catalog here because I had specified a catalog just before here. Um, with the usual way, the assign, the label, and the extent. And uh, also, there's a one difference is that I'm going to use a sub-allocation here instead of a unique uh, allocation like I do on MVS because on MVS you want to, s to look at your uh, at your VSAM data set or at least their name and so on so it's better to make a unique allocation for each uh, VSAM data set but on a DOS VS system you have a, especially on that one there is a whole DASD dedicated to VSAM data set with uh, data sets with uh, a user space to store them, so uh, I'm just using the user space to store the cluster anyway, because there is no way I can look at the, the names and the content of a DASD and so on easily with uh, a, a graphical interface. I need to, to run jobs for the car, from the card reader, so I don't gain that much by uh, storing data sets or VSAM data sets with a unique allocation anyway. So. That's probably the only difference, but beside that, it should be okay. So let me again submit this job. Uh, so that's VSAM uh, def, huh? that was it. Okay, so I have to go here. So I set the user catalog label. I'm gonna use a user catalog. There's a master catalog on the five pack and also a user catalog with a user space on an entire DASD, dedicated DASD. So that's where I, I'm going to store my uh, cluster. So I first set the user catalog label for the job so that I can store data sets uh, on that specific catalog. I delete the previous cluster if any, then I sub allocate the cluster the same way I do on MVS. Uh, so that should be okay <coughs> and then i want to uh, load this with records you know using my cobalt program so let me show you the cobalt program now now this one is a cobalt program on the usvs so of course i have this user id the usvs because i'm running my system in a virtual machine then I have this uh, option. Remember that option is a multitask uh, statement on the OSVS. So this one is to give indication to the compiler. And I want to link my program and <coughs> execute it essentially. No list, uh, the, no symbol, no X reference. It's not necessary. You need to use the F COBOL uh, compiler. That's the ANS COBOL compiler. And remember that in MVS, we have this parameter lib that we have to specify in the catalog procedure. Over here, that's the way to do it. You write CBL lib. CBL is a statement to provide the parameters, further parameters to the compiler. Lib is one of them, but you can, there are some other available. So you have to put it right there and it has to start in column two, you know. That's important. And then there is the program of uh, J. Mosley. It's almost the same. The only difference is I change over here. The fact that in the MVS version, it is assigned to a data set on disk, but now I have to assign it on the card reader. So the, 
that's how I say it in COBOL over here. You can see the card reader, 2540. And this is the logical unit of the card reader. So and that's the, the logical unit I have to use for the for my records. You're going to see uh, later. But after that, it's pretty much the same with the same instructions and everything. And then, oh, too fast. Here it is. So <coughs> that's the link is it. It's very simple. I don't have to give anything more to do any concatenation. It's going to find automatically the, the module. And then <coughs> when I want to, uh, to execute, I want to use this uh, this uh, cluster so I have to specify the catalog so these three here are for the catalog these three over here that's for my VSAM data set and this one in the middle that's for the card reader and so that's system input that I assigned to this logical unit in the program and in the, the deck it's going to be just after the exact statement over here then you can see actually the, uh, the the records just after the exec. It's like a, an input season DD in, uh, in MVS, you know. And one thing very important, which I learned the hard way, you have to specify this with the coma. Okay, so because normally you would say exec the name of the program coma size equal to auto, but because this program is uh, the result of the, the linker, it has no name, you don't give a name there, but you still need to provide the, the coma over there. And you have to specify size auto because uh, it, it has to be a little slightly bigger than it normally is because of the VSAM uh, uh, treatment in the program. So just because I didn't write this before, it didn't work and it take a, a long time for me to discover that I have to do it type this uh, size auto, but now that I've done it, it should work, you know, and after that, of course, there is the, uh, the 100 uh, records. So if I submit this, I should be able to load my uh, cluster using my COBOL program. Uh, No, it seems to go well. Let's uh, cut the paper again. Uh, that must be 34, I guess. Huh? Uh, I'm almost done. It's one hour. Uh, okay. Oh, whoop. That's not what I want to do. Uh, the green one, please. All right. Uh, what's going on here? So first, <coughs> we have this... Uh, Oh, that's the other job which I did not uh, not created. You know this uh, employee cluster with the data and the index and everything went fine. And now that was the same the same kind of uh, uh, <coughs> statement uh, for uh, the access method services. You know that's that's okay. And after that, there should be my job, my other job. Okay, so that's the FCOBOL compiler. That's the program with the copy book. You can see that it was copied indeed. <laughs> okay, so we found it in the source, the system, system source library, no problem. Then the program itself. There is no messages because I ask uh, no messages. The link is it. This one, uh, you can see that it finds, uh, to link, it finds the Visam IO module. That's very fine. And it's still there, uh, the CSEC over there. And then you have the execution. We set the user catalog label. We set the, the card reader. We set the label of the cluster. And we execute the program. And it says that 100 records were loaded successfully, exactly like the same message that we had on MVS, so it works fine. Maybe I run finally this uh, famous uh, program to print over here. Maybe some print. I um, know that was KSDS part. And then 
That's probably true that there's six sockets now. Mm -hmm. Like this. That should be it. Ah, okay. And then we have the print. And we have all the, the records with the keys. So everything went fine. And that, that was the output we had on the MVS. Okay. So uh, that's about it, you know, I think. Do I have something more to say? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, of course, you could have run this from this... Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> that's a... <coughs> uh, for example, I have this list cat over here. Uh, and it's possible from the virtual machine here to submit the job instead of using uh, the card reader so all these jobs could be uh, stored in a CMS uh, in CMS files and submitted to the virtual machine the way I showed actually in the, in the videos I made uh, that's one thing and you can also uh, set the uh, spool the the printer of that virtual machine to this particular one over there so that you can look at the output with the SF browse utility a little bit like SDSF uh, so that that's something you can do and you can even create you know uh, the vSAM data sets uh, using uh, <coughs> uh, the AM serve command on VM370 on CMS so you wouldn't need you, you don't necessarily need to run a job from the card reader on the OSVS to create uh, clusters on the OSVS. Uh, that's one thing. <coughs> and even more, it would be possible to actually compile those programs on CMS with the CMS DOS environment, like I explained, I believe, in one of my videos on working on the OSVS. So that most of this thing could be done basically on uh, on CMS, and that would be a, a different way to do to work with uh, VSAM data sets on VM three seventy. Either you use the the COBOL OS compile MVT compiler with uh, the with uh, an OS uh, formatted dice D. Uh, like I did in that video uh, M493 or you use the F COBOL compiler of the OSVS and the CMS the OS environment to compile over there and use vSAM data set stores on the OSVS DASD you know the, the, of your system and, and it would work you know it, it's essentially the same thing Okay, uh, now a last uh, few last comments. Uh, again, I'm gonna put uh, these programs over there, so probably in the tab DOSVS and the tab uh, MVS38J, so it will be possible to uh, to download them without having to watch my video and copy them manually. That's one thing, and uh, of course I did <coughs> everything in COBOL over here because I. As I said, I believe that uh, uh, COBOL is the language of record processing and stuff like that. It's more interesting for many people, I guess. Certainly more than PL1. I showed that it was possible to use that VSAM IO with PL1 on the M370. And of course, it's perfectly possible to do so on VM um, MVS38J. So you can use VSAM IO with PL1 on MVS 3AJ because that's exactly what we do on VM actually. So it works there exactly like it works on, uh, on VM 370. And it should work on the OSVS, but I haven't been uh, successful in doing so uh, on the OSVS. Not because it's not possible, it's just because I don't have the knowledge to do it. The reason comes from the fact that uh, the, the compiler, the, the COBOL compiler on MVT or on MVS, is an ANS COBOL and it's pretty much the same as the, com the COBOL, the F COBOL on DOSVS that we have. So these, uh, these, the interaction between the COBOL program and the assembler routine works on both systems smoothly. 
However, the PL1 compiler uh, for PL1F on MVS38G is quite different from the PL1 compiler we have from DOS 360 on DOS VS release 34. So these are not the same compilers. They're not on C compilers at all, you know. And uh, the, on the OSVS, it's a smaller uh, compiler, actually, and a small a subset of PL1. And the parameter handling is different uh, from one system to another. So to properly use Visamayo with a PL1 program on, on the OSVS, you would need to understand pretty well how the parameters of a, you know, if you want to transfer to uh, to transmit parameters from a PL1 module to a, an assembler module, you need to understand very well how this operation is done on the OSVS, and it's different from the opera the, the way it is done on MVS uh, 3AJ. Okay, that that I learned, and there's not that much documentation about that in the, the documentation of uh, the DOS, uh, the PL1 compiler on the OSVS. And of course, even if I know a little bit about this, I have to understand on the, the, uh, the assembler side, you know, what's going on with the, the registers and so on, to, with the address of the structure, the PL1 structures and so on. And that kind of stuff, I don't know. So I'm exploring this uh, right now with uh, half success. I made progress with this. I understand a little. I learned about the assembler. And again, uh, assembler is uh, on the OSVS is slightly different from the one on on MVS2, especially with regards to uh, data sets and file control blocks and stuff like that, and parameter transmission. So, if any of you knows about this and can uh, set up uh, what what has to be done, you know that that would be nice. Although I think that most other people, if they ever use Visamayo on the USVS, will use it with the COBOL and that works fine over there. But it could be a, a fun thing to debug, you know, to try to understand how this is done. Actually, on a, on a discussion group, the, someone was asking a little bit about uh, parameter transmission between PL1 and Assembler, but he was asking that on, on MVS. So. The kind of answer I get over there does not apply on DOSVS, I'm pretty sure of that. So, so anyway, that's an open problem, but it's possibly a, a fun thing to explore at some point. Okay, so I'm going to stop here because it's already pretty long. I hope you liked the video. <coughs> and anyway, you can cut it, I guess, at the middle if you don't like uh, DOSVS at all. This is, this is a system that's much less appreciated or used, I'd say, than the other ones. So, that was just for the fun of it. Okay, so bye-bye and see you next time, maybe. Thank you, René. It's very useful, as is always with you. I have been able to follow your steps and make it work. Now, one thing that, of course, we are not discussing at all in this mini-series by Professor René van Long with the previous video on M173, and now with this video, M174, is the catalog management and VSAM go very very much hand in hand and of course it's the same whether with mvs uh, 3.8 or any later versions of mvs or with dos vse or vse or zvse vsam and catalog management are in a way two manifestations of the same underlying technology and so they need to be looked at it together and then i've shown how to work with catalogs and vsam in previous videos and so you may want to look at those as well to get a more comprehensive understanding and knowledge of uh, this vsam i want to call it almost database or or file system for the ibm mainframe operating systems thank you René Ferlon. thank you all for watching if you have any questions please post them below this video i'm quite sure that professor René Ferlon is going to be very happy to answer and uh, or myself wherever i can thank you very much goodbye